Yeah, so there have been some arrests that have made. Prosecutions have happened. Now the work moves to not only future arrests, but also making sure those who already went to jail go through the full judicial process. We've arrested dozens of people suspected of felonies. On Friday, Interim Police Chief Adrian Diaz detailed the long list of arrests they've made in the Little Saigon community. Some of that as a part of a plan called Operation New Day, a move by city leaders to stop crime and increase safety in troubled areas of the city like 12th and Jackson and 3rd Avenue. We made arrests for illegal trafficking of fentanyl, cocaine, heroin. Authorities say a group of 16 people with ties to 12th and Jackson are some of those arrested for drug distribution, possession, and legally having guns. As U.S. Attorney Nick Brown for the Western District of Washington explains, four of those are now federal cases. The combination of, of narcotic dealing and firearms is always going to be a priority for the federal government. Uh, that's a really dangerous combination and we've seen a rise in shootings across our city. Why is it so important to do this in this moment? Well, I think we all see what's going on downtown, and, and everybody in that teamwork that was at Operation New Day on Friday has the same concerns. We want Seattle to look better than it is now. A spokesperson with the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office talked to us about worries that certain suspects arrested in these areas are getting out of jail, given either a low bail or sent on their own recognizance as granted by a judge. Whether somebody's in or out of custody, it's certainly a concern if, if we have somebody who's dangerous, who's out of custody, but that's not going to change our charging decision. Tonight, the city of Tacoma is clearing out a large homeless enc encampment in an effort to get the homeless off the streets and into shelters. Neighbors and nearby businesses say this camp is known for drug use and other problems, and they're worried they're only getting pushed to another block. Tacoma's Jackie Kent explains what the city plans to do next. It's unpleasant to, to see this state of decay in our city, and it's unpleasant that you can't walk safely uh, without fear of them being a little rowdy. Christopher Olson tells us this homeless camp off 2nd and Tacoma Avenue has been a long time problem, and tonight part of it is still here. Today, he and many other neighbors watched as city crews started clearing the encampment of furniture, shopping carts full of clothes, children's toys, and a lot more. But the city says four of the six campers here stayed, and none of them accepted help, like shelter or other services. When they're not accepting help, like the services you're providing, what's your next move? What we can do is basically, you know, we can continue to connect with them, continue to offer. Tacoma police were on standby as a couple campers walked away with their items in tow. Neighbors worry that means the problem will only keep shuffling to another block. They keep popping up, so I don't know. We'll see. The city currently has more than 70 available shelter beds and says it's looking to work with any property owners willing to open up a so-called low barrier shelter location. So uh, an option for folks um, that that maybe doesn't have as many requirements as some of our other shelter like curfew or things like that that may be limiting for for folks um, in terms of why they might not want to go inside. Yeah, and having covered the state legislature for uh, more than three decades, I can tell you that uh, nothing is ever over until it's over. Nothing dies until the very last moment. And this was a bill that both parties wanted uh, the ability to deal with the, an extended emergency. It's been two years since the governor declared a pandemic emergency, having us put on masks and closing some businesses and activities. A bill designed to give the legislature more equal say as an emergency goes over a long period of time, passed the Senate, but stalled in the House. I had a chance to ask Democratic leaders about it. Well, with the emergency powers bill, why didn't it get through and is there a chance it can be resurrected before the end of the session? You know, we had it on the floor the day before cutoff, the night before cutoff. Uh, for Senate bills. But Democratic House Speaker Lori Jenkins said Republicans flooded the effort with amendments. And then it became clear during the First Amendment that was offered that there was going to be a lot of debate, a lot, a lot of uh, speeches on the Republican side. You can imagine we, we have some people that have been um, feeling strongly about being able to share their views on that for the last two years, and it was taken down in 20 minutes. Being the majority party, Democrats have the power to do that. Rep Sullivan and I went over and visited Rep Wilcox and said, hey, do you want to pass the bill or do you want to give a lot of speeches? And he said, let me think about it. I was asked if we were going to talk 
talk about it. And I said, well, yeah, our, our members are going to talk. The emergency powers bill never resurfaced, and there are only two more days to bring it back to life. It's not exempt from cutoff, so I don't think, uh, I don't, there are some people who think I have magical fairy dust that I can sprinkle on things and make bills come back alive. Uh, if there is magical fairy dust in this office, I have not found it yet. And it's a global organization that, as you mentioned, has ties to Washington here with its office in Federal Way. Their mission is to help people in times of turmoil, especially when they need it the most. It's an immense undertaking for people trying to lend a hand. Most of the refugees from Ukraine are mothers who raised two or three children. That's the voice of Andrea Bajor. She works for World Vision and is on the ground at the Romanian border that's along the southern part of Ukraine. She and many others are helping bring supplies to people getting out of the country, as well as for folks still in the country. There are more than uh, tens of thousands of refugees that are crossing the border from Ukraine. Many of them women and young kids who have had to leave everything they know behind while the men stay in Ukraine to fight. It's heartbreaking that these children are forced to flee their houses and their schools. It's why World Vision has been working around the clock, providing essentials for physical health, like toothbrushes, soap and shampoo, but also things to keep young ones entertained to try and help with their mental health amid the chaos. It's comparable to some of the worst disasters, crises we've ever seen. Stephen Edwards is the program manager for the humanitarian and emergency services team for World Vision. Seeing the images coming from inside Ukraine and from the Romanian border where many people with World Vision are stationed has been difficult to watch. Honestly, I'm heartbroken more than anything else. It's people who truly are having to leave without anything and and have no idea if and when they'll be able to return home. But it gives people like Bajor an even greater sense of importance to take care of the people fleeing Ukraine. A lot of people will come uh, in the next few days. Hi, everyone. I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.